Sharing information on the Internet is profoundly changing how we communicate. In the near future, using the Internet will be as common as using telephone services we have today. In some cases, I suspect we'll hardly even notice when we're online. To give you an idea of how different things may be in just a few years, let's take a look at the future. In this next video, you'll see a professor who is collaborating with a colleague. Now, the technology he's using doesn't really exist, but it's based on capabilities we have today. Network file sharing, voice recognition, video teleconferencing, even intelligent agents. Although you may not have realized it, those of you who have conducted database queries or explored the web using a search tool like Yahoo have been using intelligent agents that exist today. It's just that in the future, they'll be able to do a lot more. You have three messages. Your graduate research team in Guatemala, just checking in. Robert Jordan, a second semester junior, requesting a second extension on his term paper. And your mother reminding you about your father. Surprise birthday party next Sunday. Today, you have a faculty lunch at 12 o'clock. You need to take Kathy to the airport by 2. You have a lecture at 4.15 on deforestation in the Amazon rainforest. Right. Let me see the lecture notes from last semester. No, that's not enough. I need to review more recent literature. Pull up all the new articles I haven't read yet. Journal articles only? Mm hmm fine. Your friend Jill Gilbert has published an article about deforestation in the Amazon and its effects on rainfall in the Sub-Sahara. It also covers drought's effect on food production in Africa and increasing imports of food. Contact Jill. I'm sorry, she's not available right now. I left a message that you had called. Okay. Let's see. There's an article about five years ago, Dr. Flemson or something. He really disagreed with the direction of Jill's research. John Fleming of Uppsala University. He published in the Journal of Earth Science of July 20 of 2006. Yes, that's it. He was challenging Jill's projection of the amount of carbon dioxide being released to the atmosphere through deforestation. I'd like to recheck his figures. Here is the rate of deforestation he predicted. Mm-hmm, and what happened? Hmm, he was really off. Give me the university research network. Show only universities with geography nodes. Show Brazil. Copy the last 30 years at this location at one month intervals. Excuse me, Jill Gilbert is calling back. Great, put her through. Hi Mike, what's up? Jill, thanks for getting back to me. Well, I guess that new grant of yours hasn't dampened your literary abilities. Rumor has it that you've just put out the definitive article on deforestation. Aha. Uh -huh. Is this one of your typical last-minute panics for lecture material? <laughs> it would be great if you were available to make a few comments. Nothing formal. After my talk, you would come up on the big screen, discuss your article, and then answer some questions from the class. You know, I have a simulation that shows the spread of the Sahara over the last 20 years. Here, let me show you. Nice. Very nice. I've got some maps of the Amazon area during the same time. Let's put these together. Hmm. Interesting. I can definitely use this. Thanks for your time, Jill. I really appreciate it. No problem. But next time I'm in Berkeley, you're buying the dinner. Dinner, right. See ya. 415.
，拜拜。While you were busy, your mother called again to remind you to pick up the birthday cake. Hmm. Fine, fine, fine. Um, print this article before I go. Now printing. Okay, I'm going to lunch now. If Kathy calls, tell her I'll be there at two o'clock. Also, find out if I can set up a meeting tomorrow morning with、um, Tom Lee. Enjoy your lunch. Hello, Professor Bradford is away at the moment. Would you like to leave a message? Michael, this is your mother. I know that you're there. I'm just calling to remind you to call your sister and pick up. The intelligent agent in that video was represented by an actor. Probably not the way things will actually turn out. Today's intelligent agents work behind the scenes, and that trend is likely to continue. Knowledge Navigator also gave us a hint of an emerging technology that will eliminate all the trouble we have today with non-compatible files. It's called OpenDoc. OpenDoc will allow documents from different applications to work together and be combined. Like the rainforest maps the professor was creating, OpenDoc will also make it easy to customize applications by selecting just the combination of tools we'd like to use from a number of sources. In this next story, you'll see a teacher who is using OpenDoc to create an electronic field guide for her biology students. OpenDoc is allowing her to integrate tools and resource materials from her school server and from the internet. Another technology to watch for is CyberDog. CyberDog is a new technology from Apple that allows you to drag and drop internet information onto your personal desktop. In the future, we'll also be able to access our files from wherever we happen to be. Watch for the high school student who is working on her team Shakespeare project at home and then later in class. Everything you're about to see and you think. Really good teachers' based activities with their kids really don't just open up the world to let the kids do anything. There's sort of a hidden structure, and the kinds of tools you put out for kids to work with actually sort of guide the way they are able to inquire and build and communicate their ideas. What we imagine for the future is sort of a workspace or desktop where teachers can just choose all the different tools they want, drop them into place, go to work, and and the software takes care of all of the integrations. The kinds of tools we're looking at and developing are ones that allow you to create learning environments, do your own publishing, build things that are in fact are useful not only at the moment but can potentially be useful to the colleagues in your district and beyond. Peter. Hi. Hi.、Uh, listen, I am totally stumped. I have this great unit on growth in nature, but I'm having a heck of a time really driving the point home.、Uh, what are you looking for exactly? Well, I've got some great observation experiments, and I've got some great background material on cell growth. But you're just not sure how to open the lesson. Yes, that's it. That's exactly it. That's my problem.、Uh, you're in luck. I came across some really good time lapse stuff last week. Worked great with my kids. Here, I'll send you CyberLink. They've got a whole series of shots like, well, like this one. Just browse through. You can choose the ones you like. This is perfect. Thank you so much, Peter. Listen, I'll see you next week at the district meeting. I'll be there. <laughs> the real world's full of all kinds of sounds and actions and colors that that really turn kids on. That's that's what really drives curiosity. If in the future we had really powerful mobile devices that would help kids collect those images and sounds and, and work with them. We'd have a kind of opportunity for learning that we've never had before. The real power of these technologies is that kids would have the opportunity to connect to other sources of information, to ask questions, to compare and contrast, to analyze, right there at the moment of discovery. When 
kids get back to the classroom, they'll be able to share their experiences through powerful multimedia presentations that really capture the, the dynamics of, of the experience they had in the field. They can get their ideas together on their own personal desktops, but then distribute their work anywhere in the school or even to remote locations. You know, with a little editing, I could use this footage in our diorama here at the park. What do you think, you guys? Absolutely great. great. had a very small information space that was practical to think about people going through and indexing at least what they thought were the big ideas of the key concepts. Now where the information space is literally global and includes not just text but images and sounds, uh, the models we've used in the past to do our searches simply aren't adequate. So the notion is to develop tools that make it easier and easier to navigate with purpose through that sea of information. Tools that are smart enough, intelligent enough to be sensitive to context. There's work being done with intelligent agents that look at the kind of materials that you, you find and personally value, analyzing them and then going off, sometimes for hours and hours at a time, paring down the thousands of potentially relevant pieces of information to the few high quality ones that you really want to spend your time on. Dear Father, it is thy business that I go about. No blown ambition doth our arms incite, but love, dear love, and our aged father's right. So now, in spite of the fact that he kicked her out of the family, Cordelia remains loyal to her father and doesn't stop loving him. Now listen, I've put these three clips on the bulletin board if you like. Great educators challenge their students with big ideas. Ideas that have to be thought about and researched over long periods of time. Real advantage to anywhere, anytime computing the way we're thinking about it is that no matter where students were, they'd be able to get back to their own personal desktop and continue working on that project, on that big idea. The tools that we imagine for the future are really based on the technologies that we have today. Our responsibility is to make sure that every kid in every kind of school has access to these kinds of tools, not just to enable them to find more data, but to, but to gain real knowledge and to learn how to solve real-world problems. <laughs>